Welcome to CivilNet. We have a special guest with us joining us via Skype from New York, Sarah Lee Whitson. She is a board member of Project 2015. Sarah, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, we are now heading into uh, 2015, the 100th anniversary, the centennial of the Armenian Genocide. There are many, many initiatives, events, commemorations, um, conferences being planned around the 100th anniversary of the genocide. Um, but your initiative is something different. Uh, can you please tell us what it's about, what Project 2015 is about? Sure. Uh, Project 2015 is an effort to bring as many Armenians as possible to Istanbul from Armenia, from the diaspora, uh, to commemorate the Armenian Genocide, the centennial of the Armenian Genocide, uh, really at the scene of the crime. Uh, as we all know, uh, April 24, the day that we commemorate the genocide was the day when Armenian intellectuals, artists, community leaders were rounded up in Istanbul, uh, deported and ultimately executed. Uh, and so we wanted to return there because that's really the most important place uh, for us to be commemorating the horrific crimes uh, against the Armenian people. Um, and there's also a very important purpose in being in Istanbul, uh, and that is uh, to join with many Turks uh, who recognize the Armenian Genocide and have, in fact, been organizing public uh, commemorations of the genocide for the past seven years. And it's imp very important for the Turkish people and the Turkish government to see that there are many Turks uh, who are ready to make amends, uh, to recognize uh, the, the crimes of the Ottoman government uh, against the Armenian people, and to stand shoulder to shoulder with Armenians to say uh, that what happened is not acceptable and that what the Turkish government needs to do now is to recognize what happened. Um, you know, that's quite an ambitious endeavor. You know, in the grand narrative of this great sort of national tragedy that we have suffered through now for generations, for 100 years, 100 years of pain, um, there are a lot of Armenians uh, still uh, in Armenia and in the diaspora who don't trust Turkey, who don't trust the Turks, who say that, you know, I will not go to Turkey, I will not participate. These, uh, these events really are um, a product of government, Turkish uh, manipulation and all of that. Um, what would you say to that argument? I mean, this initiative is to bring Armenians to Istanbul, uh, but what about that sentiment that persists in our sort of in our identities, in our narratives, in our lives, whether that's in the diaspora or in the homeland? Um, well, I guess uh, the most important thing to note is that the Turkish government has nothing to do with these commemorations that have been taking place in Istanbul for many years. And in fact, uh, as I'm sure everyone knows, um, it's not an activity that the Turkish government supports. Uh, given its denialist position. Um, and I think that uh, it's just very important uh, for us to have this conversation um, with Turkish civil society because ultimately they stand in the best place to push the Turkish government to recognize the genocide. Uh, it's important and good, obviously, to get others, other government officials, to recognize the genocide and so forth. But I think we all know, a hundred years later, this is a conversation, this is a dialogue, this is an effort that needs to take place uh, with the Turkish government and the Turkish people. Um, that is where uh, the obstacle is right now. Um, I know that there are, it's still very emotionally difficult for Armenians to even hear Turkish spoken sometimes, much less to travel to Turkey. Um, but we're not going to make progress, we're not going to move forward uh, if we don't take that bold step and remind the Turkish government and the Turkish people that we're still here. Uh, that we're not going away, that we haven't forgotten, and that we are a part of these lands as much as anybody else. Um, we were refugees from that land, those of us who survived were refugees from that land, and I don't think Armenians have fully grasped uh, their own ties uh, to this land. Uh, by cutting themselves off from it, uh, Turkey doesn't uh, lose, Turkey gains. Right, right. Well, uh, certainly, uh Sarah Lee, I was in uh, Istanbul in April 24, 2014 this year uh, to take part in the commemoration events. We were um, there to prepare reports and we were live streaming uh, f for CivilNet. Uh, and to see the hundreds and thousands of Turks and Kurds who take part in those commemorations was really quite moving. And the one message uh, among those Turks who do want their government to recognize the Armenian genocide is that they need the Armenians to come and stand with them shoulder to shoulder to do exactly what you said earlier, 
um, you know, to help change the perception, the belief in Turkish society, and then to force some kind of acknowledgement. Um, what has, what kind of response have you gotten so far? Are people signing up, or is there a signing up process? Uh, how, if somebody wants to come, what, what, what steps must they take? Um, well, really, uh, the only step they need to take is to uh, buy their plane ticket or bus ticket or, or, or uh, uh, a boat ticket, however it is uh, they want to come, wherever they are, uh, and show up uh, in Istanbul on our website, which is uh, armenianproject2015.org, uh, or .com, sorry. Uh, you'll see a description of the events that we're organizing, which includes uh, a conference, an academic conference on April 22. Uh, a musical concert on April 23, and the public commemoration events on April 24. Um, we have a list of recommended hotels, uh, and obviously we will be providing more information as the time comes. Uh, those who wish to do so can indicate that they want to join uh, by uh, sending us a note on our website. Uh, we do plan to keep a list of those who are planning to come, although I know many, many people who are coming have not signed up on the website, so they're not uh, uh, mutually exclusive things. Um, uh, we really do hope to see a good number of Armenians there uh, because, you know, uh, it's, it's our centennial uh, and we want to commemorate this on the ground in Istanbul because if we want the world to know that a hundred years later we have not forgotten and we will persist in our efforts, then I think the most important and dramatic place we can do that from is from Istanbul. Uh, Sarah, you, uh, aside from being a board member of Project 2015, you are also the Middle East and North Africa Executive Director for Human Rights Watch. Um, and we see what's been taking place in the Middle East, not only in recent years, but for decades. Uh, a lot of us who are following the news of what's taking place, especially with uh, IS, Islamic State, and the images that we were seeing of the Yazidis being massacred or you know, trying to find shelter on Mount Sinjar, it was really reminiscent for many Armenians and very quite traumatic for a lot of us watching those images because it did remind us of the stories that we grew up with from our grandparents who did survive the Armenian Genocide. What would the recognition of the Armenian Genocide by Turkey today mean? Would it change anything? Would it impact um, any group or nation state who is involved in these kinds of crimes that are taking place today? I think it will be tremendously important, uh, particularly given the standing of Turkey today uh, among uh, other Middle Eastern uh, uh, populations, among Arab populations, uh, as a model of an Islamist uh, progressive government. Um, obviously, there are a lot of problems with its progressive record, particularly most recently given its attacks on the media, um, but as a symbol of, number one, accountability, uh, number two, truth. Uh, these would be very important gestures uh, to showing that a government can stand to account uh, for even the crimes of its predecessors, uh, can recognize the historical record. Uh, and most importantly, I think uh, recognition uh, would also uh, show um, that these issues don't go away and there can be no resolution, there can be no forward movement uh, until the truth is acknowledged. And that's something that obviously is still missing. Um, it's uh, finally a very important effort uh, at demonstrating respect, uh, tolerance, and appreciation for minority communities uh, in the midst of the Middle East, uh, in the midst of the Near East, uh, in the midst of the former Ottoman lands, uh, where really, uh, 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 for, for now well over a hundred years, uh, Derzor have been killing fields. Um, and it's very clear that if we can't account and, and, and provide truth for what happened in Derzor 100 years ago, it's going to be very hard uh, to stop that cycle, to end that cycle of persecution uh, and destruction of minority communities that's ongoing today. Well, Sarah Lee, thank you, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to talk to us about this uh, really, um, I would say forward-thinking, progressive initiative, and I do hope that uh, many people will visit your set website. It's Proje Armenian Genocide Project 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Armenian uh, 2015. Right, and you also have a Facebook page, and you're very active on Twitter, so people can follow and see and look at all the events that are taking place. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest via Skype from New York was Sarah Lee Whitson, a board member of Project 2015. Stay with CivilNet.